Hey everyone, welcome back to Visual Scriptures. For those who might be new to this channel, my name is Mark. On this channel, I combine my love for God and filmmaking together to share His Word with others. Over the last few videos, we have been exploring the Book of Psalms, deconstructing the individual Psalms and seeing how they can apply to our lives today. In doing so, we have been looking at the deeper meanings that we can often miss in our 21st century perspectives. In today's video, we are going to be having a look at Psalm 6. But before we get into that, I think it's important to begin by discussing the significance of this Psalm in some Jewish and Christian traditions. In Jewish custom, Psalm 6 is well known and included in the daily prayers. This psalm is called the Tachanun prayer, which means supplication, but it can also be roughly translated to pleading. According to rabbinic thought, the prayer's emphasis is on our shortcomings to serve as a reminder to cultivate humility and to help us remain mindful of our mistakes. Interestingly, a similar tradition was adopted by Christianity. In Christian tradition, Psalm 6 is the first psalm of a group of psalms categorized by early churches as penitential psalms. These are psalms of confession and are meant to express the deep sorrow for sin. And it is customary for some denominations to recite these prayers during various times of the year, such as during Lent, the period of time leading to Easter. So, with the history lesson out of the way, let's jump into the actual psalm. This psalm's title is For the Director of Music, with Stringed Instruments, according to Shemanith, a psalm of David. As with the last few psalms we've explored, this title does not provide us with much of an insight as to the context in which it was written, but it does attribute authorship to David. According to both rabbinic and Christian thought, the ambiguity of many of the Psalms in terms of the exact setting and context in which they were written is intentional. By not specifying an exact context, the author allows readers to apply the Psalms into their own lives and their respective situations. Psalm 6 begins with King David passionately petitioning to God for mercy asking God to not rebuke him or discipline him. Again, we don't know the exact context, but we do know, as we will see shortly, that King David is in a lot of pain, and he seems to acknowledge that this pain is the result of something he had done, and that God is teaching him something accordingly. Now, the Bible does state that God sometimes does discipline his children out of love, to teach them important and valuable lessons. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 11 to 12 states, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves, as a father, the son he delights in. And in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 7 to 8 and 10, it states, Endure hardship as a disciple. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share in His holiness. In a world that teaches us that there is no right or wrong, and where God's word is being tossed more and more by the wayside, it can be easy to respond negatively to God's correction and to think of it as cruel. But that is not the way that David or the Bible saw it. Instead, it was seen as a sign of God's love and David did not respond to God in an angry manner or reject his teaching. Quite the opposite. Let's have a look at how he responded. The psalm continues to describe the state of King David's life. In verses 2 to 3, he describes himself as faint and his soul to be in deep anguish. 
he states that his bones are in agony. And in verse 6, he states that he is worn out from groaning and that he floods his bed with weeping and drenches his couch with tears. In fact, according to Jewish texts, it is said that for many years, King David's pillows had to be changed seven times during the night as it was repeatedly drenched with tears. This psalm depicts a man in deep pain and suffering. I think we've all been there, maybe not to the same extent as David, but we've all been in pain in some way or another. Sometimes that pain can be the result of the actions of others, and sometimes it can be the result of our own. When we are in pain, it can be easy to begin losing faith and to become trapped in our worries and situation. It can be easy to feel that God has abandoned us and will not deliver us from whatever we are going through. But David does not lose faith. Instead, he proclaims his faith. Or as Pastor David Guzik describes it, David makes a confident declaration of his faith. In verse 4, David asks God to turn and deliver him, to save him because of his unfailing love. And in verses 8 to 10, he confidently states that God has heard his cry for mercy and he has accepted his prayer. And accordingly, his enemies will be suddenly put to shame. I think we can all learn something from this strong faith in God. Again, David did not respond negatively to God's correction, and he also did not lose faith despite his circumstances. Instead, he made a confident declaration of his faith, and similar to the last psalm we looked at, he waited expectantly to God to answer his prayers. So, are there areas of your life that you feel that God is correcting you or trying to build you up? Or are you just going through a difficult situation? Whichever it is, I think there is plenty to learn from how David handled his errors and difficulties in this psalm. That's it from me today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please consider hitting that like button and sharing this video with someone you think may need it. Please also consider subscribing for more videos on the Psalms and how they can apply to our lives today. Thanks again for watching and until next time, stay safe and keep that faith.